Okay, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand, therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. How many know that when you're in the prayer mode, you can see in the spirit? You can see the schemes of the enemy, you can see what God's doing? Let's just not focus on what the enemy's doing. Let's focus on what Jesus wants to do, right? It says, and above all things have fervent love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. You know, we need to just focus, make sure that you're, you're concentrating on, on loving one another, loving the brethren, loving each other, uh, not, not being petty over, over tiny little insults or tiny little slights. You know, love one another, love one another, love. You know how many times the New Testament tells us to love one another? I mean, there's so many times. I, I think it's because it, it, we have issues. Yeah. <laughs> And we constantly need to, every book of the Bible says love one another, love one another. Would you please love one another? And it says be hospitable to one another without grumbling. And thank God we're in the friendliest church in America, so we don't have any problem there. And uh, <laughs> as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. It's many-sided. It's multifaceted, the grace of God. So this morning what I want to talk to you about is that you have a superpower. Every Christian is given a superpower. And you are going to discover, there's going to be activation, you're going to discover what that power is. God's going to help you recognize it. And then you're going to flow in that superpower. It may not be what you think. You may already be, be flowing in a superpower and not even know it. Not even know it. Okay, so you have, it says, as each one has received a gift. Everybody say, each one. Each one. Everybody say, that means me. That means me. That's right, that's you. That means each one. Everyone has received a gift from the Lord to minister to other people, yeah. to be used. Okay, praise the Lord. So good. So, this is your Christmas gift. You're going to get a, you're going to have, you're going to be amazing. So, look, look at Luke 20, verse 19. Luke 20, verse 19. Oh, man. Excuse me, John 20. Oh, I always I do that. Every once in a while, I double-check these things, and, and it's Norm's fault. He, he calls me up right at that time. <laughs> he messes with my notes. <laughs> and then he sits there and looks at it, gives me that look. He knows I'm teasing him. Come on, people. Didn't he do a great job last week? Yeah. Didn't, didn't he, Norm? Good job. Thank you so much, Norm, for filling in for me last week while I was on vacation. I had a great time in California. Um, if you can ignore the politics and look at the mountains, you'll be just fine. Yeah, praise the Lord. Okay, John chapter 20, verse 19. In the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said, Peace be to you. Jewish greeting, you know, shalom, peace be to you. So if you wonder what you're going to be like in your resurrected body, you know, look at what Jesus was like when he was in his resurrected body. You know, how many think it would be great to pass through walls? <laughs> It's not science fiction. It's right here in the Bible. I mean, uh, you're going to have a spiritual body, but it's physics too. And then Jesus ate food, so I'm glad that he, he ate some food. Because I was real happy about that. I'm like, okay, when I get a resurrected body, I'm going to be eating. Uh, you know, so that's good. So when he sa said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And he said to them, peace to you. As the Father sent me, I also send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed in them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. How I many know oh, because Jesus rose from the dead and he went to the Father, that, that he came back, that you, every believer, receives the Holy Spirit. You, when, you cannot be saved unless you have the Holy Spirit. And he breathed in them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So, so uh, in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, it, it says, uh, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are not his. So you have to, to, to be saved, you get the Holy Spirit. Get the Holy Spirit. And you know what the Holy Spirit brings with them? Giftings. Giftings and anointings and abilities. Now, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit just came upon people. It came upon, you know, uh, Samson. The Spirit came upon him. He did great exploits of, of physical strength. But now you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. You don't just have the Holy Spirit coming upon. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. 
The same Holy Spirit that gave amazing wisdom to Solomon, that anointed King David to kill a giant and to administrate justice and to administrate his kingdom. Come on, church. Yeah, the same Holy Spirit that was in Elijah when he did all those miracles. And Elisha. Yeah, is in you. Is in you. <laughs> okay, so now go to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus said, but you shall receive... So the same people that, that uh, were, were received the Holy Spirit, had this because you, you can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. He also told those same people who he breathed on to receive the Holy Spirit to wait in Jerusalem until they received power. Until they received a, another thing. A baptism in the Holy Spirit. Right? An endowment of power. And he said... Uh, he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And that power is the word dunamis, where you get the word dynamite, explosive power. I'm telling you, this, the reason I'm telling you this is because you have a superpower. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to awaken it. And some of those, those superpowers are not what you think. Okay. And, uh, but he shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Explosive power. What is a witness? A witness is a proof producer. A proof producer of the risen Lord. We do, we do proof in many different ways. In many different ways. You know, Joseph, in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, when he was uh, working for, uh, he was a slave, to his master Potiphar. And when he was a slave, Potiphar could literally see the blessing of God upon him. Potiphar could literally see the superpower of Joseph at work. His whole house was blessed because of the administrative ability of Joseph, which was an anointing of the Spirit of God. Joseph may have had some natural giftings, but God can take your natural giftings and breathe on them by the Holy Spirit, and it can be, and they can see the blessing upon you. Yeah. You can be a proof producer of the risen Lord. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad that blessed you. <laughs> okay, I'm just messing with you. So you shall receive power, dunamis power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now I'll go to Luke chapter 11, verse 13, if you would. We're going to go through a lot of scripture here. And the baptism in the Holy Spirit is the gateway to spiritual gifts, but those aren't the only gifts we're going to be talking about this morning. So Luke chapter, chapter 11, verse 13. If you then, being evil, know, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? So the power of the Holy Spirit is available to anybody that asks for it. Amen. It's not just limited to Pentecostals. It's 13. It's, yeah, 11, 13. Isn't that right, Norm? Norm. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's li anybody who wants the power of the Holy Spirit can have it. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing, that, the only thing that, that limits the Lord is our ignorance. Yeah. Not knowing what's available in the things of the Spirit and not reaching out and grabbing it. It, and appropriating it by faith. How many know that people don't know how to get saved unless there's a preacher? When the preacher comes and tells them that they need to repent of their sins, turn to Jesus, Jesus will forgive them and they will have eternal life. Then once they know, then they can act. Then they, well, they can choose to act or not to act, right? Once you know that the power of the Holy Spirit is available, it's up to you to act upon it. To appropriate it by faith. To reach out and receive it. Ask to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the power of God. Yes. And you'll be accessing greater superpowers. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> 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 Woo. Praise the Lord. Yep. Let's look at some giftings. Let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses, starting with verse 11. So there's, there's actually uh, three sets of giftings in the Bible. 
Now, uh, there's the, what they call the ministry gifts, the spiritual gifts, and what we call the motivational gifts. I don't know if any of you have ever heard any of these teachings before, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go along like you've never heard any of this before, because some of you I don't think you've ever heard this. So, so those of you that know this stuff, just, just stay with us and, and, tra and track, track with me. So, uh, what are the ministry gifts? What's, what's going on with that? Well, in Ephesians chapter 4, when you start with uh, verse 7, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does it mean? But he first also descended in lower parts of the earth. He also descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of, of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, perfect to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So he gives these gifts. How many of you know that, that all five of these, there's five of them, Okay, and it's just like like the like the hand, and 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 all five of these gifts are given to to equip the body of Christ with ministry gifts. And notice it's Jesus giving them. The Holy Spirit gives gifts. Jesus gives people. Jesus gave people to the body of Christ, anointed men and women that move in these offices, and and now, and we believe that there's a, a ministry set apart. For, for the people of God, they're not better than anyone else. We're all equal at the cross, right? We're all equally loved. But some people have a calling. Paul said, I was called to be an apostle by God. Some people are called out to be leadership in God's body. Yeah. Okay, yeah. praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, what does that mean? That means you have greater responsibility and greater accountability to whom much is given, much is expected. Yeah. Right? Paul said, woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. God gave this to me and I, I have to be a steward. I have to be a steward of the gift and calling of God. So there are called out ones specifically designed by God to build you up and to help you discover your superpower. <laughs> and to help you discover. And then empower you to do, to walk in your superpower. To walk in the gifting that God has for you for the edification of the body. Edification comes from the word edifice, big building, right? You know, to build up something, to build up the body of Christ. The reason why we don't see the body growing and building is because some of us aren't walking in our superpower. We don't even know we have it. But if we're all walking in our superpower, we can minister to one another. Come on, church, and be activated, activated in the power of the Holy Spirit, activated in the power of God. In the Old Testament, the Levites were the ones selected by God to be the, to be the minister, to ministers. The Levites and, the, and the, out of the Levites, the tribe of Aaron, were the priests. That was, was 10%. That was the tithe of the people. The tithe of the people was the, was the Levites. Did you know that? And, and so, so I believe that in the body of Christ, one-tenth of the body of Christ are the called. God calls people. He calls specific people to be leadership in the body of Christ. And you know what he does? God is so amazing. He, he, he selects very weird people. You know, he selects very strange people that, 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 that you know, and he, he, he selects these people that are the least of the body of Christ so that all glory goes to, <laughs> so all glory goes to Jesus. You know, because, because, uh, <laughs> yeah. come on, church. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time I was watching this preacher, his name is Morris Cirillo, and he has no neck, and he talks like this, so he's Morris Cirillo, and I just blah, 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 and I go, that guy's weird. But you know what? The anointing of the Holy Spirit was on him, and you have to humble yourself to receive from him. Yeah. 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 Come on, church. I remember, I remember one time I was watching Benny Hen. He has that George Jetson hairdo, you know, and he's acting all weird. And I thought, and I thought, but you got to humble yourself to receive from George Jetson. You got, you got to get down there, and you got to, you got to receive from the Lord. Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! Okay, praise the Lord. So, so God selects sometimes the nerdiest people. <laughs> 
because he wants all glory to go to him. You know, I had this guy, he, he told me, he goes, when I told him, I said, I think God's called me into the pastoral ministry. And I was waving my hair back like this. And, I, and my friend goes, no. <laughs> That's LSD talking, you know. That it lodged in your fat tissues. And now you're having flashbacks and you're just imagining strange things. And this, this one guy said, said, there's no way God would call you to the ministry. You're too lighthearted. Let's laugh at that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. God only calls, calls people that are downers to be in the ministry. What is that going to do? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You're too lighthearted. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There, there's just so many people in the body of Christ right now, and a lot of them have been really rejected, and truly they are... They are prophets or prophetic people. Now, I'm not saying that as an excuse because they're weird that their doctrine shouldn't be checked. It should be with the Word of God. But if you really listen to a lot of these prophets that God has brought forth, they're, they're right on, but their personalities are really different. So now, like what Pastor I was saying, we have to humble ourselves, guys, and see through some things. Like I said, it doesn't mean that we grab a hold of some people are, who are saying wrong things against the Word of God. But if you listen to some of these people, they're really right on. And um, I think God in these last days really wants us to start sharpening our discernment. You know, and then sometimes they'll be on, and then they might say something that's a little bit off. Well, you've got to give grace towards them too, okay? And because they'll, they'll come into the right doctrinal things, and um, because they should be held accountable. I agree with all that. But we've got to be careful because, like, I have looked, you know, I've been saved now for 43 years. Have you ever seen Catherine Kuhlman? Darling, could you do this? Yeah. Darling. I mean, she just kind of floated. She was real different. But wow, did the power of God just work through here? So what I'm saying is learn to really see through spiritual eyes people, you know, the, the prophetic people that God's bringing out, and, and don't just slam everybody who's a little bit different. Okay? Amen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, honey. That was very good. And some of God's best men are women. Come on. And you, you might have to humble yourself and receive from a woman. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I mean, there's so much prejudice against women still in the body of Christ, and there's some powerful women that God has raised up to preach the Word of God. Okay, as we keep going here, let's keep going. So, apostles, prophets, uh, evangelists. Now, now, for some reason, apostles and prophets are getting a lot of attention these days. And, uh, uh, you know, just because somebody calls himself an apostle doesn't mean bunk. You know, there's a lot of people calling themselves an apostle nowadays. Paul said the sign that uh, the, the works of a mighty deed, signs and wonders and mighty deeds are the sign of an apostle. So when somebody tells me they're an apostle, I go, well, what have you done? Yeah. Well, I started two home Bible studies. Now I'm an apostle. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, right. You know? I don't. Try, try starting 500 Bible colleges and overseeing a thousand churches like Dr. Van Royen. Yeah. Apostle, that's right. Huh? Come on. Try, try being a pastor's pastor like uh, Tony Kemp and, and have an apostolic message to the body of Christ and having uh, hundreds of churches submitting to you yep. and pastors. Apostle, that's, right. that's a little bit more on the apostolic side. And they don't even like to call themselves that. They don't even receive the, the title. They just want you to call them Leon or Tony. Yeah. Is anybody with me today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> And, and what is a prophet? You know, just because a person, a person might have an anointing to prophesy, and there's different levels of anointing of prophecy, a person might have an anointing to prophesy on a, on a local level or in a church, and they may have a prophetic gifting, but to be called in the office of a prophet, it's different. It's the difference between a short order cook and a chef. Uh -huh. that's right. Are you with me? Because, because somebody that's a, a true prophet of the Lord, whenever I hear a prophet of the Lord teach the Bible, they don't really teach like meth methodically like I teach. They, they're more mosaic, and they just grab stuff all over the place, and, they just, and it's just kind of different the way that they teach. Yeah. But, they, but uh, unlo every one of these ministry gifts is pulpit ministry too, and it's teaching and training the body of Christ. Yeah. 
If, if a person can't handle the pulpit, they're not one of these fivefold ministry yeah. gifts. Right. Is everybody with me? Because it's for training and for, and for teaching and for, and, and it's recognized. Now the body of Christ recognizes gifts on people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't get your cards out. Let your gift make room for you and let it be recognized. Praise the Lord. Just, why don't you just focus on Jesus and serve him with all your heart and the giftings will come out of you as you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And they will come out. Okay, and the cream rises to the top. And some evangelists, we need evangelists so bad, people. In the 80s, everybody wanted to be an evangelist just like everybody wants to be a prophet right now, you know? And, and, and because of that, and there were so many powerful evangelists, and I'm like, where did the, they go? Where'd they go? Why aren't we esteeming evangelists again, the proclaimers of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, getting people saved? The Billy Grahams, where are they? Where are they? Lord, raise them up. Raise them up. Release your gifts. Let people discover their superpower. They're among us. Some of them are among us. And then, and, then, uh, and then some of us are just lowly pastors. You know, we don't count for anything. But... <laughs> and, then, and then teachers. Teachers of the, of the Word of God. You know, uh, when, when, I, when I think of anointed teachers, I think of Perry Stone. I think, I think of this, man, I mean, man, he just goes in so many scriptures and it just, and he brings in the history and he brings in the blah, blah, blah. And he's not boring to listen to. Yeah, praise God. So, as, so that's, the, that's the ministry gifts. And it's to, to build up the body of Christ, to train the body of Christ, to help them release in their, in their anointings and giftings. Now, the reason why we have uh, several different uh, ministry gifts here come to the church is because if all you get is pastor teacher, Pastor Al, you know, pastor teacher, you're, you're, you're going to be lopsided in your development. Why? You, you need input from other anointings. Okay, supplements, other anointings. If, if, if all you ate was sauerkraut every day, you know, you'd be bloated and weird. But, but we got we to gotta bring in the steak and potatoes, you know, and we, we got to bring in the lasagna. We got to bring in the pizza. And we got to bring in other good stuff, right? Yeah, that's why we have other ministry gifts coming. So, let's look at spiritual gifts. And I just want to draw out one thing. We all know about the spiritual gifts. So those are the ministry gifts in the body of Christ. Now, when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, because I really want to get to this, this, this last part, the motivational gifts in Romans. But... Um, so when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm just going to touch on a couple things here. There's nine spiritual gifts, and starting with verse 7, but the manifestations of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So how many of you know you, you don't have to limit yourself to any, the, to any one of these? The Holy Spirit is able to work through you any one of these gifts, any time that he wants to, any time you need to walk in it. You mean I can have a word of knowledge? Yes, you can. Don't limit yourself. You mean, you mean I can pray for somebody and they, they get healed? Gift of healing? Yeah, it, don't limit yourself. You mean I can have a message in tongues and speak in a foreign language that I never learned? Yeah, don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Well, I don't want that gift. I want the... No. <laughs> no, you're going you're gonna to accept the gift that God gives you because they're gifts. How, how many of you gave gifts to people and they went, oh, I didn't want that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the wrong color. I, I remember it was the worst Christmas ever. I, I had to get a specific Barbie doll. Okay, it was very specific. I mean, everything was specific. And they were all sold out everywhere. I mean, I, I was running around different stores all over. Please, please, give me the Barbie doll. And finally, they had a generic one that was exactly like the real Barbie doll, but it was generic and it was the last one in the store. Oh, that was the worst decision of my life. I should have waited till they restocked the shelves after Christmas. <laughs> She knew it. I mean, they know it. They, they knew exactly that this was not the exact Barbie doll. So, okay. Don't judge my parenting. Now, as, 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 we, as we keep going, as we keep going. But, 
It's the same spirit for all. And, and it talks about the words of wisdom, words of knowledge, all these different wonderful, and, and, and baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is the gateway into the power of God. Now, I've known many people that, we've, that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and for whatever reason, tongues is resonant in them, although they haven't released it, who I've seen walk in amazing gifts of discernment and some of these powerful giftings who have not manifested a prayer language of tongues. Now, to be scripturally accurate, when you go through the book of Acts, tongues is the physical evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So if somebody is, is baptized in the Holy Spirit and they're not speaking in tongues, that means that it's resident within them. They just need to be released with that. Is everybody with me? But I've seen people who have, who have not manifested that for whatever reason, like your dad. He, amazing spiritual discernment. I just can't believe some of, this, some of the things that he, that he sees in the Spirit. It's amazing. So, let's go to the motivational gifts, Romans chapter 12, because I want I want to get to this one. Because when we think of the superpowers, we you know, it, and I'm probably guilty of this, is I'm, I we accentuate more of the power gifts of the Holy Spirit as the superpowers. But I just want to tell you that that uh, uh, some of you have superpowers that for some that it's not getting acknowledged and recognized. You know, because they're not, they're not as, as, as uh, showy and dynamic as some of these here. Praise the Lord. But nevertheless, it is a gift of the Holy Spirit and it's powerful. Okay, so let's go to Romans chapter 12. And uh, we've got to move along here. Romans chapter 12. Uh, when you, it talks, do not be conform. Now, Romans 12, 1 and 2 are very important if you want to move in your, if you want to have a release of your superpower. Of the gift of the Holy of the gifts of the Holy Spirit within you, you have to be sac live a sacrificial life. You have to live a life dedicated to the Lord. You have to not let, allow yourself to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Like sitting under good preaching today, the Word of God is going forth, and you're being transformed. You're getting renewed in the spirit of your mind, right? And then verse three: For I say through the grace given to me, not to uh, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So we look at this verse and we beat up one another and we go, we go don't think more highly than yourself, don't think more highly than themselves. But there's an opposite side to this verse too. Don't think less of yourself. Think soberly. You know, don't, don't, don't always be insulting yourself and call that hum humility. You know, we, we need to, to be sober about it and realistic about where we're at. Yeah. Okay? And if somebody compliments you, don't rebuke them for complimenting you. And say, oh, don't praise me, praise Jesus. <laughs> Let me get... <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying when you say, don't praise me, praise Jesus? I know you're tempted to put me right there with Jesus and praise me on equal level. But don't do it. <laughs> no, no. Praise Jesus. Now, I know you, some of you don't, didn't really mean that when you say that. But, but listen to me now. When somebody compliments you, this is what you say. Thank you. If you make them feel good for complimenting you, they will continue to do it. And it will be fun. Okay. I warned you. God calls weird people into the ministry. You got it. Okay, uh... So, I didn't call me. Take it up with Jesus. And uh, it says, For we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function. That means everybody has a superpower. <laughs> okay, so we being many are one body in Christ, individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace. Remember, the grace is manifold. It's multifaceted. It's a grace. Grace is unmerited favor, but unmerited favor is empowerment. Paul says, I labor more abundantly than all, not I, but the grace that's within me. That's why there's grace for you to be in your marriage. There's grace for you to raise your children. There's grace for you to work your job. There's grace for you to get up in the morning and do what God, you can call upon the grace of God, the strength of the Lord to empower you and enable you. Don't ever say you can't. You can do all things through Christ. Everything that he's called you to do, you can do it. 
He'll give you the grace to do it. He'll give you a superpower to be able to do it. Okay? So, uh, having then gifts differing according to the grace let us uh, given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. So we call these the motivational gift because, because people have different giftings and motivations in the body of Christ because we're not all the same. And uh, it's not the object of Christianity to cookie cut everybody and make everybody look and act the same. Right. We're all different. We have different personalities. We're all individuals. Now we're all trying to conform to the character of Jesus, right. you know, which is, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, patience, kindness, you know, that, that is universal to every believer. But your giftings are going to be different. You are individual. You are a mix of wonderful superpowers and gifts from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, and and one of those one of those gifts is pro, is prophetic. Some people are are very prof, are more prophetic than other. Now, a prophetic person tends to be very black and white, and they t they tend to see things uh, good, evil, you know, bad, you know, and and they point out things to us that that sometimes we're too we're so loving that that we we don't want to address different issues that need to be addressed that are sin. You know, and the prophetic person will say, and, and, you know, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say, well, you know, that person needs to be healed. And the prophetic person will say, that person needs to repent. <laughs> Come on. And you go, well, who's right? They're both right. Okay. But the prophetic person needs to learn how to not be mean about it. Yeah. <laughs> So, so listen to this one. So your superpower could be that, that you, you, you see things that need to be fixed. Yeah. You know? You know? I don't want to give you permission to be hypercritical now. <laughs> okay. Great discernment. Okay, so the next one is, is, is uh, ministry. Or ministry, in some versions say service. Some people are motivated to serve. And praise God, it's a superpower. Praise God, the church could not exist with people who had a servant mentality. For people that want to do things. When I see uh, Pat Milligan, I know she doesn't want me to bring her up when she does the communion. every, you know, And then she comes down and she picks the flowers for me to the flower. She doesn't expect any acknowledgement or anything for that. She just loves to serve. She finds areas to serve. When I think of the Mayos and I think of the Barlows and I think of Peggy and... And, uh, you know, and, and Jerry. Sorry, I forgot your name, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when I think of all the people, uh, e even, uh, you know, Pastor Jesse and Ann, I mean, these people serve. They find areas to serve, and they have great ability in the things that they do that, that I can't do. I was uh, um, helping a, a, a man of God the other, the other week. He was asking me about his ministry and stuff, and I said, I said, brother, you can't do it all. Yeah. You can't do all that stuff. You have to delegate. There, you have to, you have to allow the gifting around you. P people have gifts from the Lord. Yeah. You know, they, they need to be walking in their gifts. I can't do the bookkeeping like Kathy does, nor do I want to. <laughs> you know, plus somebody would say, hey, he's fudging on those books. You know, so that's why we got accountability on those books. Amen. <laughs> It's a protection, but I'm also not as good. I'm not that good at it. I mean, you want him to be really messed up, you just ask me to do it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we'll have lines drawn, we'll have blueprints and stuff going all over the place. Nobody will know where the money's going. <laughs> we'll have a Cayman Island accounts. It'll be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> But, you know, we, we have different gifts. We have administrative gifts. You know, uh, uh, Lynette keeps, keeps me on track. She keep, gets the schedule going. We, we have a schedule. We know what's going on. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll say, somebody wants to use the church for this date, Lynette, what's going on? You know, I don't know what's going on. Lynette knows what's going on, and she tells me what's going on. <laughs> Is anybody with me today? Yeah, yeah. yeah you need gifts. I said, said this, bro brother, there are people smarter than you. There's some, you need to surround yourself with people smarter than you that know how to do stuff. 
I just want you to know that I'm terrible at children's ministry. I tried to do it a few times. I mean, my wife put me in costumes and stuff and made me look ridiculous in front of kids. <laughs> and I did it for the Lord. But those, those kids, you know, I get them all riled up and they start jumping and shouting and hitting each other and wrestling. And, and I, there's no order when I'm around. I mean, they're just like, Wah! can't do it. I need, you know, we need people that are anointed to do these kind of things. Come on. And you know what? You, God can give you a superpower for a season. You can have a grace come upon you to do something just for a season in your life. And then, and then you'll know when that grace, grace lifts. You'll know, you know what? The grace is gone for this. It's, it's leave. I have to move on to something else. The well has dried up. We did a Bible study, Nicole and I, when we were first married, and people were coming from all over. This house was full. People were getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. I mean, we, we did havoc on a Wesleyan church in town. It was so terrible that Wesleyans kept coming, getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, much to the chagrin of their pastor. And I didn't make them do it. They just came. And uh, <laughs> they were hungry. And, uh, and the power of God was flowing. People were getting built up and people were getting saved in the Bible study. Well, then, then we had to, we, the grace lifted and we had to move on to other things and we stopped the Bible study. Well, we, we sat around and we go, remember those days when the Bible study was so powerful in our house and, and God was moving so powerfully? And, and we tried to resurrect it and tried to get it going and like two people came. <laughs> and, and there wasn't any, it was like a waste of our time, you know? And, and we thought, where's the grace? What happened to the grace of this? Because, because we have to be sensitive to what God is doing. Let me tell you something. God is going to be in this tent revival this sum summer. This summer in July. God is in this. God is in this. God is in this. God is going to move powerfully. He's going to move mightily. Our job is to find out what he's doing and then buy into his plan. Not just tell him what we want him to do. But what are you doing, God? How do we, how do we partner with you Okay, praise the Lord. Yeah, so, so I, anyways, I'm making a short story longer. But there's, a, there's teaching. You know, I have kind of a teaching gift, but I also have an exhortation gift. Ex exhorters among us, people that are encouragers. Barnabas was called the son of encouragement because he had a wonderful gift of encouragement on him. Right, to encourage people. That's a superpower. And anointed by the Holy Spirit. Exhortation, giving. There's, there's people that give. They have wonderful giving gifts. I, I know that, that, that sometimes we have class envy towards people who are very prosperous and rich. But there are, there are some people that are called to make money for the kingdom of God. And to make a lot of money for the kingdom of God. And they, and they give like 50% of their income, 70% of their income to the things of God. And they're still living like millionaires. Even after they give so much to the kingdom of God. Some of you could be called to own businesses and to make money. Ooh, I wish that was my calling. Well, hey, it could be. I don't know. But it's not about greed. It's about getting, get, giving into the kingdom and seeing the kingdom manifested and expanded. And You know, this Bible's cost money. It costs money to heat a building. It costs money to build buildings. How many know that, praise God, that we got to... Givers, you know, in the body of Christ that see the need and they write the check. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but there it is. Givers. Not just servers. Not just people that serve with their time and give with their energies that way. But people who give money. It's a gifting. It's an anointing. Here's leading. Leading is also administrative. Wonderful administrative and organizational gifts. And then uh, mercy. Thank God for people with mercy. You know, um, sometimes, you know, we'll give up on people. You know, we'll, we'll say, oh, you know, I'm just tired. I've beat my head against that, that thing for so long. But the merciful person will go, no, I'm not going to give up. God's going to love them. We're going to see them enter the kingdom of God. Two years later, you're like, aren't you going to give up on that person yet? No, the Lord won't release me. I just have such mercy and compassion. I just, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. Praise the Lord for the gift of mercy. Yeah, I'll tell you, when I'm down and out, and I know I've failed the Lord, I don't want to go to the prophet. 
<laughs> Although I probably need to repent. It sure is nice when the mercy motivated person can come up and go, Brother, it's going to be okay. God is, he, he can even turn this around. God is good. Come on, church, amen? Okay, yeah, last thing. There are other gifts, and I don't have time to look up all these scriptures. There are other giftings, amazing giftings. There is a gift of intercession. And Anna, she was, she was uh, one of those in the Bible who prayed night and day. She fasted and prayed for years, stayed in the temple. And, and her, her amazing, you know, you know, a person with the gift of intercession, they love prayer meetings, they love coming to prayer meetings, praying. Now everybody's to intercede, everybody's to pray, everybody's to cultivate, cultivate, cultivate the discipline of praying and interceding. And let me tell you, it's easier to pray in a prayer meeting than it is in your home. For most people. For most people. I know that when I get into a gym atmosphere, I can focus on a really good workout for 45 minutes or an hour. My home is built for comfort. I, you know, I've got to get to the gym if I want to get a good workout. If, 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 you, if a good prayer meeting where it's disciplined and focused is good for you. I'd, I would encourage every Christian to attend one a month if they could. And get themselves built up in the spirit, get prayed over, and learn to pray through to the to the victory. But they're intercessors. Some people just will pray for hours and not get bored. So there are some people who can press in and pray for. I'm talking hours. My wife used to pray for like eight hours a day. She would pray, and I'd go, well, "What does she do all that time?" She prayed, she worshipped, she prayed for her Bible, she would get topics, she would work, minister to the Lord, she would pray some more. Is anybody with me? I mean, there are, there are people called that have a gifting, an anointing above the normal. Okay, there are skilled tradesmen. You might not have known this, but, but as a skilled tradesman, you may be anointed by the Holy Spirit to do it. And you can serve with your gifts. I know Colton's come over and helped me out a couple times with my plumbing. <laughs> but thank God for that. He's, he's anointed for that. I know you don't think of that as a spiritual gift. But I'll tell you, as, as the Christian, the work of your hands are blessed. Everything you do can be graced by God. Everything you do can be a superpower to serve. Yeah. Woo! Praise the Lord. I know there's a season in my life where I was, where I was called the sales work. And God so anointed me in that work. I, every place I went, I had such favor. Doors would open. And it, the grace was so powerful that I was making so much money, you know, as a, as a salesman that I, I almost didn't want to go into ministry after that. Is anybody with me? Yeah. You know? And, and the Lord had to, had, to, had to take the feathers out of my nest to say, uh, this was just a grace. This is not meant to be a distraction for you. <laughs> this was just a temporary grace. But anywhere you're at, God can give you a superpower and you can have favor and do wonderful things in the body of Christ. And when you look at that, the skilled tradesmen, these guys, these guys were anointed by the Holy Spirit to, 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 to design the ark. To design, to, to help Moses with the tabernacle, to do these things. They were skilled tradesmen, anointed by the Spirit. We tend to separate the secular from the sacred. We tend to separate what we do outside of church, cooking meals at home, doing things like that, different than, than something spiritual. In the Bible, everything, your, everything in your life is spiritual. Everything in your life is part of your worship. Everything that you have to do can be graced by God, and God can have a superpower released in you in some of these areas. Caring for children. Praise the Lord. Okay. Whatever you do, do it hardly as unto the Lord and not unto men. I want you to stand up and we're going to pray. And I'm going to pray that the Lord releases you. That the Lord activates your superpower and that you start discovering some of the natural giftings and supernatural giftings of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember? It's been, a gift has been given to each one. The Bible talks about the parable of the, of the talents, where each one was given a talent according to their ability. So there are some people that apparently have more giftings than other people.
But to whom more is given, much is expected. But the good news is, is everybody gets at least one. And you can, you can multiply that and do wonderful things, amazing things in the body of Christ and in your life. Let's raise our hands. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would just release and activate, Father. Release and activate the, the powerful giftings that are in our midst, God. That people would, would recognize that they, that they are connected to a bigger purpose. And that God has anointed them and called them to special functions in the body of Christ and in life. And they have something to give. They have something to give. They have amazing and amazing gifts to give in Jesus' name. I want to end with this story. I posted it on Facebook and because it was, it was such an incredible story. And this guy was a manager. And I could identify because I was a manager and I did hiring at a Wendy's hamburger. And this guy was a manager and he, he pulled on the bottom of the pile and he saw this young man's name, so he called him up and asked him to come in for an interview. When he came in for the interview, he, he realized that the young man had Down syndrome. And, uh, uh, and he, but he didn't feel like that would be a hindrance to him in, in what, he had to, what he was going to train him to do. So he felt, you know, I'm going I'm to hire this guy. After, after he hired him, he, he, the, team, the team people were not very thrilled with working with him because they thought it would make their job harder. And so they weren't very thrilled and he, he started training him as a cook, or excuse me, just as working the grill area and doing the Hamburg thing. And he, and he was a machine. He just, he just worked fantastic at, at, at this. Back then, they didn't have the computer screens that would tell what, uh, what sandwiches were being ordered. The, the cashier would shout back the different orders. And it was then that they discovered that this Down Syndrome guy had a special gift. He had photographic hearing. And, and uh, the, the sandwich maker would say, what, what did he say? And the Down Syndrome young man would say, no pickles, lettuce, mayonnaise. And after that, after they discovered that he had photographic hearing, everyone wanted to work with him because they knew that he would be so helpful. And he was accepted. He had other giftings, too, amazing savant giftings. I just want you to know, you have a superpower. Yes. You have some things that are yet to be discovered that God wants to do in you. And it's such a beautiful story to think that even the least among us has something amazing to contribute if we'll just find that out. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I just pray that you would bless our day, bless your church. This, I just pray that your grace would shine down on your church and give them peace in Jesus' name. Amen. This altar is open. If you have never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you come up and stand over here and we're going to pray over you and we're, we have a gift of a, of a book that we want to give to you. So, so if you need Jesus, you need to be assured that you're going to heaven you need to not be in a quick hurry to go. And anyone else that needs prayer, we're going to be available to pray for you. God bless you. Amen.